Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Justin Rucker with some tips that I haven't seen talked about with the THR2 amp. Uh, I have the THR210. Um, if you guys don't know about it, there's tons of review videos over the, the basic functionality. Today I'm going to talk about a couple things that I think are worth talking about. First of all, we have this app right here. This is on an iPad, but it works on the iPhone, and from what I understand, it works on Android as well. Uh, it connects to the amp via Bluetooth. The pairing process is really easy. Amp is already on. Uh, app is open. I just tap the little B at the top. Tap the amp. It shows up in the list. It says connected. We are good to go. Uh, the amp itself has most of the main controls you need across the top. I mean, you got like your gain, master, uh, EQ, uh, basic control for your effects, echo, reverb, and then you have a guitar master volume and an audio line master volume if you're using Bluetooth or the line in, or if you're actually connecting it to something with USB, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, with the THR2, 10 version, uh, you're kind of limited on the amp models you can select from the top. Uh, I believe the THR32 has all the amps available right from the knob, but with the 10 you actually use the app and you can go in and choose between modern, boutique, and classic, and it brings up all the amp models that Yamaha's ever made in their amps. Um, the thing that I find about this app that's great is you can actually connect it to a MIDI foot switch. Uh, this is the FPV, FBV Express in K2. It's kind of old, it's pretty cheap. Uh, does what I needed to do. Uh, it comes with an app that you load on the computer and you can actually like assign each one of these to send a specific MIDI message. Uh, for this app, it likes the CC messages, so I have these just set for like CC 1, 2, 3, 4, I believe. Um, I haven't really set up anything with this yet. I don't think there's much you can do. Uh, with that, but it works great for switching between presets, which for a practice amp that I'm not really doing too much with, but just jamming on my couch, that's great. Uh, so you would think you would plug this in directly to the amp, but actually we plug it into the iPad or iPhone, and it's wireless, you know, it's Bluetooth between these two, so you don't ha actually have to be near your amp, which is kind of neat. Um, so now that this guy's plugged in, uh, I don't know if you can see terribly well, but I'm on preset one. It's got the little one highlighted up there, and if I press the next one, you'll see the app update. It actually changes sound pretty quickly. Um, it's pretty fast, I'd say, compared to what I thought it would be being over Bluetooth. Uh, there's not like much of an audio dropout while it's changing the settings. You know, maybe not reliable enough for live use, but for working from home and just messing around, it definitely adds another level to the practice amp that I really enjoy. Um, something else that I find insanely useful with this thing is the ability to actually use it as a uh, DAW interface. So in this case, we're already hooked up to the iPad. I'm gonna close it out, <coughs> open up, I'll just go GarageBand. And I'm actually going to unplug the USB from my foot switch, just because I have it at the handy, plug it into the back of my amp. And now it's an audio interface for GarageBand, as well as being the speaker. Uh, it's an okay speaker. Uh, you know, my studio monitors sound a lot better, but for, again, just messing around on the couch and not having to, like, do anything... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn the guitar knob down and leave the audio up. Now we're only hearing audio from GarageBand, which is nothing yet until I turn on monitoring. 
Now I can actually use GarageBand sounds and record right into GarageBand. Uh, playback happens. Something I recorded previously. Uh, so it's really cool for that. Um, and last but not least, uh, this is another kind of cool feature, you know, in the same vein of using it as your monitor. Uh, if you plug it into, let's say, a computer, and let's say you just picked up the new Archetype Nolly guitar effects plugin, and you'd rather use that sound instead of the built-in Yamaha sounds for some Blood Eagle. Um, it definitely can be fun. Logic figure out the audio interface. I got my uh, <coughs> gate on a little too high. So yeah, uh, nothing too out of the box, you know, some other practice amps have some interesting functionality as well, but I know a lot of people didn't expect to be able to use a foot switch with the Yamaha and they were a little disappointed, so I just wanted to share with everybody how I've been using it lately and it's definitely uh, made it a little bit more fun. Uh, it's great to have just sitting on my table out here and I usually leave it on and just it's ready to plug in and go and uh, if I don't really feel like opening Logic and getting too involved on that side of thing, I want to keep my head more into the writing side, you know, I can just open up uh, even something as simple as just the voice memos app, and while this is connected right to the iPad or the iPhone, it becomes the input, which is great. I just hit record, and it's, you know, perfect quality, uh, just like, you know, plugging into a real recording setup. Uh, I could take those recordings into Logic and work with them later on if I need to, and not necessarily always have to re-record. So yeah, have fun. Let me know if you'd like to see more about this amp, if you want me to go into the settings I use or anything like that. Uh, other than that, have a good day. See you later.